We are now, now going to talk about how to measure the concentrations of acids and bases by looking at the ionization of water. You'll notice in a water molecule, which is H2O, if one of those were to break off, like if we take this hydrogen and place it over here, we're increasing the hydronium content. H plus attaches to water. So if this is from an acid, let's say hydrochloric acid or something like that, H plus doesn't really float around in water by itself. Instead, it attaches itself to a water molecule to make H3O plus. A hydrogen by itself is too small to exist, and so that's why it attaches to something else. But if you look over on the right-hand side of the equation, we have H3O plus, and we have OH minus. So by, de by definition, water has both donated a hydrogen from here and accepted a hydrogen. So this would be the base here, and this would be the acid which would make this the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. But notice in when you did that, either way, we increase the H plus and the OH at the same time. Water is a neutral compound. It's actually the only neutral compound. That means for every H3O plus that exists in water, there's an OH minus that exists in water. They're the same. The concentrations. So in pure water, the ionization of the water molecules is a very small amount at times 10 to the negative 7. That's 0 0.123456, one more. So in, with every liter of water, there is 0 0.0000018 grams of this happening. So it's a very small amount. However, it does happen. And the important part is the fact that for every H3O plus exists, an OH minus exists. This happens completely naturally. It's called auto-ionization. It means that the water is ionizing automatically. Notice that the concentrations are the same. These brackets here is the abbreviation for concentration. And you will always find that concentration in the unit of molarity. So as we increase the H3O plus, the OH minus decreases because we have an abundance of H3O. So if we put acid in water, this would increase H3O plus. Here's our neutral point. Once we've increased that H3O plus above that neutral point, it's now considered an acid. And then consequently, the OH minus goes down. So every time the H3O plus goes up, the OH goes down. They are inversely proportionate. Here's another one. OH minus is increasing. Here's our neutral line again. Now the OH minus is above it, which is making it a base. So when the H plus is above this line, it's an acid. When the OH minus is above this line, it's a base. Once again, notice how the OH minus went up the H3O plus went down. They are inverse. So here's a visual representation for people who like to have a visual. Here's neutral. There's our neutral line. 
This happens automatically in water. Pure water. If we add an acid to the solution, the H3O plus is going to go up. If we add a base, the OH minus is going to go up. Either way, whatever doesn't go up, ends up going down. Alright, so you know that the boxes mean concentration. If we multiply the concentration of pure water, notice this is in pure water, of the H3O plus and the OH minus, because in pure water is always going to be times 10 to the negative 7 every single time, we call that a constant, which means that every single time that's going to be the same. And that gives us KW. K stands for the ion product. Constant. The W is referring to the water. If we multiply these two numbers together, we get 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That number is extremely important. That's the number you're going to want to remember. Because what happens is the KW, notice, remember the word constant, will always be there. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Because we're relating it to pure water, is the concentrations of the OH minus and the H3O plus multiplied together. Remember, as one goes up, the other one will go down. Well, they always end up balancing out to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Once again, to put that into your calculator, it would be 1.0. The EXP or the EE button, only push it once, negative 14. That's the same thing as that. All right, so if we look at it, Regardless of what these concentrations are, so this one's neutral, so 1 times 10 to the negative 7, 1 times 10 to the negative 7, that's where we got this from. If the concentration of one goes up, the other one goes down. But the, K -E -Q, the KW stays the same. One went up, the other went down, KEQ is the same. This time, the concentration of Hydrogen went down and the OH minus went up. KEQ is still the same. Every single time, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. I'm going to write this equation again because it's really important. This is equal to the H3O plus times the OH minus. So we can figure out the concentration of one or the other. For instance, here we're given the concentration of H3O plus, and we're looking for the concentration of OH minus. Notice it doesn't say the concentration. That's because these brackets mean concentration. So 1.0 times 10 to the four, negative 14 is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 3 times the concentration of OH minus. That's because 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 is equal to H3O plus times OH minus. We've simply put this number into the H3O plus. So it would be 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 2 times 10 to the negative 3 is equal to the concentration of OH minus. To put that into your calculator, we're going to replace times 10 with the EE button. So 1.0 EE negative 14 divided by 2 E, e negative 3. That comes out to be OH minus is equal to 5 times 10 to the negative 12. 
that would be C. Remember, the concentration is always in molarity. Let's try another one. That's the exact same question. Okay. Um, the OH minus of an ammonia solution is this. So this is our OH minus in the equation. What is the H3O plus concentration? That's going to be what we're looking for. So once again, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 is equal to H3O plus and OH minus multiplied together. We're going to put this number into the OH minus now. So 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 is equal to H3O plus times 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2 where we want to solve for H3O plus. One times 10 to the negative 14 divided by four times 10 to the negative two. which comes out to be 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13. Once again, unit of molarity. All right, that is how you determine the concentration of either H3O plus or OH minus. You're going to end up every single time relating it to pure water because that's what you're adding it to.